Hello boys and girls, Pearl of Wisdom here from Be Pow Fix and the Pearl of Wisdom Show. And we're going to be talking about Vladimir Tarasenko today and where he may go in free agency. Um, I'm bringing this up as we just did Tyler Bertuzzi and before that we did a Connor Hullabuck trade. Which was, everybody was like, what do you mean Connor Hullabuck trade? And now it's trending all over Twitter. 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 Twitter, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now it's trending all over Twitter. Uh, so yeah, I, I, just, I caught a few things. It looked like I heard a few things. Not inside information. I just read a lot of hockey. And it sounded to me like Connor Hollebuck wasn't all that interested in coming back. You might want to check that video out. Check out the Bertuzzi video as well. But here we are going to be talking about Vladimir Tarasenko. Now, Pearl of Wisdom Show, or the Pearl of Wisdom Show is what you're watching right now. Be pal picks, I'm a professional handicapper. Making people a shit ton of money at bepalpicks.com. I'll put the link down in the bio there, or in the uh, description. You might want to check out that if you like making lots of money. We're up 15 units in basketball, 12.3 in baseball, and 420 units ever since the beginning of hockey season. If you don't know what units are, you shouldn't be gambling, but I can help you out with that. Comment in the comment section. Okay, gamble responsibly, by the way. Make sure we're making lots of money, not spending our rent money, right? Right. Tarasenko. Okay. Um, Tarasenko, of course, was picked up by the New York Rangers and uh, in the, at the trade deadline for their playoff push, which didn't really end all that well. Um, he's, well, look at him. Let's look at him right now. I got him up here. Let's look at Tarasenko, what he's like. We're going to look at some teams he may go to, what his value is, how much is he, could he possibly make in his next contract? And, uh, you know, who has the cap space to do it? Window capture work Woo. there we go got it took a long time for the window capture to come on all right yes i do this one take i don't edit anything i don't ain't nobody got time for that so if you see mistakes and you think and you don't like it then i guess just don't watch <laughs> but vladimir tarasenko 31 years old from russia uh shoots left Plays right. He generally just plays right wing. Everywhere he's been, he likes to take that shot off the uh, inside. He, he likes to take that shot from the uh, from the left side on the right hand side, and he does it very well. He's an ex forty goal scorer. Regularly scores thirty goals. He has had some injury issues in the past, but it appears that he's put him behind him pretty quick. The surgery seems to have worked really well. From all accounts that I've read, he has no pain whatsoever, and it looks like he's right back to normal all over again. Um, drafted a long time ago by St. Louis, uh, 16th overall. Had some medical treatment issues with St. Louis. Asked for a trade and didn't get one for a very long time. They kind of just, okay, yeah, okay, Vlad, we'll do that, and then, then didn't do that. So... He was making five and a half million on his last contract. Uh, he has hovered around the point of game mark pretty much his whole career. Last three years, he had just before his injury issues, he had 34 goals and 82 points in 75 games. That's spectacular numbers for a winger, no doubt about it. Nine points in 12 games he's had 64 points and 44 goals in 97 playoff games so he's had a very he's very successful goal scorer in the playoffs um huge value he's also and i don't put it up here because a lot of people don't care about analytics but i do he is a really good five on five player he was one which is why i thought that the rangers should really consider trying to get him back again i don't know if that's possible we'll take a look at that because they are not a good five on five team. Um, but he's very good five on five defensively and offensively. 
Um, just great all around player. And at 31 years old, you know, that's going to be the real difficult part. Last year, he had 29 points in 38 games in St. Louis, which would have projected to, you know, about 23 goals and 60 points. Now, that was on a bad St. Louis team that really had some bad juju going on. Um, it was quite apparent that their veterans were going to be moved on, like such as O'Reilly. And I think it really affected the room and everything in St. Louis and everybody for that matter. Nobody really had much of a career year last year in St. Louis. Moved on to the Rangers and had eight points in 13 games, which wasn't, or sorry, uh, 21 points in 31 games. Not spectacular either, but he was going to a new team, had to learn new line mates and all of those sort of things like that. But from what I watched from him, when he was hit, when he started hitting the stride in uh, New York, he looked like he was right back to his old self all over again. The, the tough part is going to be that 31-year-old thing. Giving contracts, uh, you know, he's probably going to want somewhere in the 6 to $7 million range, I'm thinking. $6 million, hopefully, for him. Uh, you know, what's his, Caulfield just got $7.8 on a eight-year deal of course he's a lot younger and he actually was underpaid it was a fantastic deal for montreal to get him signed up at 7.8 i think tarasenko is kind of kicking himself because he was probably looking to get something like that and with that contract it's going to make it tough for him to do that now there's other guys like jeff skinner who gets this uh, the same sort of production who make nine you know, you could find guys out there that are making more than Caulfield, uh, Duchesne and Nashville. There's, there's several guys, uh, you know, you, you, are you going to put him in the Forsberg category? He's making something like nine point something. Um, so if he wanted to, he could push the envelope. But being 31 years old, I think it's going to be tough for him to get more than six, six and a half at best. That's my personal opinion. We'll see what. You know, teams can go a little cray-cray, and you just never know. With the cap situation as it is, though, I don't see it. Now, as far as term is concerned, I mean, personally, I love the guy, but I'm not giving him six and a half or eight years till he's 39 years old. I'm just not doing that. No way. Uh, certainly without with no trade clauses and stuff like that in, in there. I, I just, I won't do it. But we've seen it over and over again that teams still do it. Hopefully, for anybody that's signing them, they can get them in at six years. Give them the extra half a million, maybe five even, and uh, push it to five or six years. All right, so let's start with the New York Rangers, uh, the, since they do have, their right, have his rights. Now, I was actually kind of surprised to see this. The New York Rangers actually have cap room this year. I... 11.7 million in cap. And yes, they do have Alexis Lafreniere to sign. Um, and, uh, you know, he's going to get a bit of a rage because he had 40 some points, which isn't bad for a 21 year old. I know Rangers fans are out there going, we expected more from him and all that. The guy's still a kid. I know he was drafted high, but. I mean, he wasn't really developed well for the Rangers. They played him right from the time he was 18 years old, which usually takes longer for them. When when you do that to young players, they usually take longer to hit their stride. I still think he has a lot of value here. He'll probably get a, uh, a bridge deal at 21 years old, somewhere in the two and a half to three million. So that's going to eat up some of that. Um, you want to get Tyler Mott back. That's not going to cost you all that much. They actually could, at six and a half million, sign Tarasenko. But let's see if they should. And here's the issue you have with this. Like I said, he's a good five on five guy. Their best five on five players are their young players like uh, Kako and Lafreniere. Now, if you sign Tarasenko, we already just said that he only really plays the right side. When are you going to give like Lexus Lafreniere the reins and just say go? Is it this year? Should you this year? And even if you aren't, you got to do it eventually. 
And if the Rangers sign Tarasenko to a five or six year deal, now you're stuck, aren't you? Because you're taking the spot from Lafreniere. There's no way you're playing Tarasenko down on the bottom, third line or anything like that. He's going to be playing on your top pair. So although I could see it happening, if you if we see it happen, I think you might want to think uh, look at possibility that they're going to get as much value they, as they can from Alexis Lafreniere. Now, would they at 31 years old? This would be kind of moving away from the whole rebuild thing, wouldn't it? Um, but let's play devil's advocate here. I think there's a lot of value in Alexis Lafreniere. And if there's areas of need other, uh, in other areas for the Rangers, which I don't really see that there is all that much, but if they wanted to get a really high draft pick, uh, more prospects and build their depth with Lafreniere, then you bring Tarasenko in, and by the time that crop comes up, Tarasenko is going to be older and they can take the spot, and they can be a, win, a little bit of win-now mode. And let's face it, Tarasenko, again, is probably their best five-on-five five player that they have. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to the possibility, but I, I really don't... I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comment section. I, 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 don't get the, I don't know exactly what the Rangers want to do here. How fast do they want to go? How much do they think Alexis, Alexis, Alexis Lafreniere is going to jump up next year? Personally, I think I would just keep Lafreniere. He's, he's, he's cheaper. It gives you more flexibility as the season goes on to add if you have to. That's what I would personally do. What do you think, Rangers fans? Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you're on Facebook right now, just search Perlow's NHL because they don't let you subscribe for some reason when you're watching this on Facebook. I don't know. It's crazy. But And uh, tell me in the comment section what you think about that all right next team ottawa senators and uh it seems like an odd one doesn't it but this is what i the ottawa senators seem to be really trying to push to be a playoff team fast um and if de doesn't sign this is the thing if de doesn't sign and they got to move on from him. I don't think they're going to be getting too many bodies back in that deal. If he's getting a long-term contract, he's probably going to give him a couple teams he's willing to go to. I think Ottawa Senators fans are going to be very disheartened by the return they get for Jabrinkat. But one thing it will do is it'll allow them to have cap space. And they have a lot of good, I mean, they have Batherson still. They have Stutzla, who's going to be a beast. They have uh, Pinto. They got a lot of good, solid young players. But they didn't go out and get to brink out on a win and a prayer that he might resign because I personally don't think he was, like, dreaming from the time he was a kid to play for the Ottawa Senators. I really don't. I don't know if it's the Ottawa Senators even around. Oh, yeah, it would have been. Um, <laughs> so... It really was a wing and a prayer, and hopefully if he met some, maybe a young lady in Ottawa like uh, Brady Kachuk did or something and really loved the city and decided to stick around and gave up a pretty good package with that iffiness in there. Now, he could still sign, I suppose, but from what I'm reading, it doesn't sound like it. And that would give them $17 million in cap space with... You know, you know, Pinto to sign, he gets a bridge deal probably. He'll want a bridge deal to prove himself and get maybe a bigger contract later. Uh, you, Sanderson's going to be a tough one the year after next. Uh, you hopefully can get him on a long-term deal less than Shabbat. That would be amazing. If I'm Sanderson, there's no way in hell I'm signing that because the guy's probably going to be worth 10, 10 and a half. But... You know, these guys are taking less now to try to win a cup and stuff like that. You never know. But overall, they can really fill in their roster pretty good, even if they signed a guy like Tarasenko for $6.5 million. And let's look at what that looks like. You've got Claude Giroux plays the right-hand side. 
I always wondered why they, you know, they, he could always play center again. Norris will be coming back. Giroud can play all over the lineup, by the way, too. I think it would be great for Giroud to play down on the third line and help guys like Pinto and Joseph improve their offense. That's really what he's all about. Um, but you, all, you also have Ridley Gregg coming up, so he, he can play on the, on the left side there. And you've got Tarasenko, Stutzla, and Kachuk. That's a fantastic first line. Absolutely fantastic first line. Stutzla and Brady Kachuk are not really the best defensively. So a guy like Tarasenko would help a lot for that line. And offensively, they would just be beasts. Um, again, you put, uh, you keep Batherson and Norris together. You could put Ridley Gregg on that left side. I, I think he's going to start showing offense a lot sooner than a lot of people realize. And... Um, I would put uh, Giroux with uh, Pinto and Joseph, and you've got a top nine that is absolutely fantastic. Um, you still got room to get a goaltender, which, of course, they're going to get. Hullabuck. Hullabuck. I don't know if they're going to be able to get Hullabuck, but that's where I'd be going. And if you could get Hullabuck, and you've got this top nine, and you don't make the playoffs, you know, a defense is a little bit still. The defense is solid enough. If you don't make the playoffs, then that's for sure Smith is fired because no doubt in my mind, that lineup should make the playoffs and could do some damage in the playoffs. So I would strongly consider it. I mean, uh, at, you know, up until he's 35, 36 years old, something like a five or six year deal, six and a half million dollars, you got a, a solid guy who's played a lot of playoff hockey and scored a lot in the playoffs to help these young guys when they get there. I At first, I thought, nah, they're rebuilding. They're not going to do it. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what? This is possible. It's not the highest on the list that I would say. Um, I don't know if Tar how Tarasenko would think about going to Ottawa. I don't know. I don't know the inside his head. I've been to Ottawa. If they, if, Let's put it this way. If you hadn't, well, he obviously has been to Ottawa as well, but... He hasn't really probably seen all of Ottawa uh, going there. You usually play and then you're on your way. If, uh, if the Ottawa Senators called up Tarasenko and brought him to that town, city, for me anyways, Ottawa's a beautiful city. It's a great city. It's clean, low crime. It's a fantastic city. So, And I believe Tarasenko is a family guy. So it would be something that I would totally consider. The only thing that would be difficult, of course, is the tax situation. But Ottawa Senators fans, and I've done these lots before, and most Ottawa Senators fans that do reply don't like the idea of bringing anybody in. They just want, we, I just, we just want to build with our guys on that side. We don't want anybody else in there. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that, but tell me if you do. Comment in the comment section, Ottawa Senators fans. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Perlo's NHL. Just search Perlo's NHL if you're on Facebook because you can't sub on Facebook to my channel. They don't let you. All right, next, the New York Islanders. And they're relatively low on the list, although for Islanders fans, I wish it wasn't uh, because... They need Tarasenko really bad. They're not rebuilding. They're not going to get any younger. Like, just forget about it. Just forget about the fact that you know, we need young players. Well, it's not happening. Then. They're not. <laughs> it's just not happening. The only way the Islanders get younger is if they start trading guys like Anders Lee and stuff like that. They don't go get Bo Horvat with the uh, eyes with eyes towards like that's what. Getting younger means to them a 28-year-old Horvat, way overpaid for several years. It's not happening. So the only thing they got is to keep on trying to win a cup. Now, of course, we know they've only got, what, $5 million in cap space. But they do not need Pajot. They do not need Pajot. Let's take a look at this. And uh, Pajot has a 16-team no-trade clause. I'm not going to go look at it. I already looked at it. And he's making $5 million a year. I do think that there is a market out there for a two-way guy, as he's believed to be or projected to be, 
what people say is he's actually not as good defensively as people give him credit for but there's a lot of teams that don't pay attention to analytics out there so the the perception is the word i'm looking for is that he's a great two-way player so i think there's a market out there at five million dollars a year for him i don't know which teams are i think he's got a 16 team no trade list so it would it, it might be difficult for the cap space but if it can be done, you could move him, and your $8 million Bor Horvat could go down into the third line. Um, they can even out the minutes. Barzal can go into his normal spot, and you would have room to sign Tarasenko. And you could have Tarasenko. Finally, Barzal has somebody, a creative player to play with, a truly creative player to play with. He hasn't had that, I don't think, in his whole career here. I think he would get the point production you would get out of Barzal if you got a guy like Tarasenko would probably be a career year. Got to be the most underrated player in the league. Fantastic defensively. Great two way guy. Great five on five guy. Tarasenko is as well. And you finally get a couple goals in this lineup. You don't have to constantly be win, trying to win 2 1 all the time. And again, Pajot moves on. I don't know where he moves on to. Um, and you've got Horvat is better suited to be playing down there with a guy like Wallstrom and grinding it out in the corners and putting up points in your bottom six. Um, you could still play him lots of minutes. You could still give him power play time. All of that. It can be done. Um, in this case, actually, with uh, Horvat, pa uh, Wallstrom, and Holmstrom, you really kind of have a first line and two second lines. So you've got a lot of depth that can score throughout the lineup. You're not top heavy. Um, the other one is Josh Bailey. Josh Bailey's only got one more year left on his contract. And um, you could buy him out. That'll give you a little more wiggle room. He doesn't need to be there. And Palmieri can move to the left side. Palmieri can move to the left side. Um, you could maybe bring Wallstrom up into that line. There's a lot of ways you can uh, make that top six work. And maybe even have a little time to add, like bring Parise back or Pierre Engvall. It's not going to cost you too much to bring those guys back to play in your top six as well. But the big thing is, Having a creative player like Tarasenko on that top line, I think is just, if they're going to go anywhere, they got it. I believe they have to give somebody like that to Barzal to work with. I, I really believe that. Um, as far as cap space in the future is concerned, I mean, you got some guys like Clutterbuck and Martin coming off the books soon. Bailey will be coming off the books next year. So eventually you might actually get some relief. Plus the cap's going to keep on going up here. Um, the only thing is in this deal, this you wouldn't be able to sign Mayfield. And honestly, I don't think they're going to try to sign Mayfield. I think they're going to give Aho the reins. Uh, Samuel Bulldog didn't look too bad. Um, and Noah Dobson signed for a couple more years, and you can worry about that later. So I know there was talk that um, Lamorella was actually trying to trade for Tarasenko back when he asked to be traded in St. Louis. So. Maybe they revisited it here, get a cheap backup goaltender. You got to sign Oliver Wallstrom to a bit of a deal as well. It would definitely be a tight crunch, but I think it can be done. I think they could do it. And I would be doing everything in my power to freaking do it. I mean, for the actually bring the cop down and give him the seven or eight years because, uh, yeah, when he's 37, 38 years old, this team is probably going to just be ass anyways, to tell you the honest truth. they got way too many players on on long contracts as it is. It's a win now, worry about it later franchise. It always has been. It doesn't look like it's going to change. Tell me what you think about that, Islanders fans. Would you like Tarasenko on the island? Would you do it? I know there's a lot of very uh, well, very, very good hockey uh, fans that I talk to on, on a regular basis, very knowledgeable fans in Long Island. And most of them are saying we shouldn't be doing anything like this. 
We should be trading players away, getting younger and rebuilding this team. I agree with you. I just don't see it happening. Uh, comment in the comment section. Search for Perlo's NHL on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. Comment in the comment section. I love to chat. So I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. All right, next. Calgary Flames. And again, this would be very difficult because they've only got a million two left uh, in uh, cap space. But here's the thing. I could bring up the articles, but you can just trust me or you can go look it on yourself. Uh, when they had exit talks with Backlund and Lindholm, and publicly, they did, it did not, they did not sound confident that they wanted to come back to Calgary. It's been a rough go. Uh, they've gone through several coaches. They lose Johnny Goudreau. Kachuk leaves. There's something amiss in this organization. And I think they tried to change it around uh, with Trill Living going. And, and, you know, a lot of people had a difficult time with Sutter. And it's kind of left a bad taste in their mouth. You think about it. Oh, I'm sure Calgary Flames fans are going to be like, come on. Like, we, 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 you know, Sutter is gone and all of those sort of things like that. But they've already gone through coaches. They've gone through so much change already in Calgary. I think it's possible they could be like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I mean, if I'm going to do a change, I might as well really do a change and go to an organization that I'm more confident that they're going to be able to win with. And how confident are you going to be without Goudreau, without Kachuk? And I know you got Huberto in there, but, I mean, he didn't have a great year. He was very vocal and complaining. So was, uh, so was Kadri. I, I just get this feeling that neither one of them want to be back. So, if that is the case, and it might not be the case, but we'll see. I'm usually fairly accurate on these things for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, they're, they really are going to want to get another center. That really isn't out there right now. They might be able to get, if they trade Lindholm, they might get a decent center back, but not a great center. Uh, I think they're just going to have to work on their top center over time but if they want to keep on banging the drum on on being a playoff team and i don't know i've never known calgary to do anything but i just don't think that ownership has any palette whatsoever to ever rebuild which is why they end up being a middling team and you know again like we were talking about with the islanders that's probably what they should do i just don't see it happening so if, if they trade Lindholm and maybe Backlund has to move on, you could do a package with Mangiopani and hopefully get another center back and have some cap space to sign a guy like Tarasenko. And you got two crazy good shooters on the right-hand side with Toffoli and Tarasenko. Whoever X would be in the middle, Kadri would be there for sure. And you keep on banging the drum. You keep on moving on. I hear Noah Hannafin is another one. I mean... That is the other thing in Calgary. They do not have an analytics team to save their lives. They have no idea about it. It's all eye test with them. And I'm telling you, analytics help your eye test. It helps you look at the game differently, way differently. That's why great analytics teams like Colorado, look at what New Jersey's doing right now, Carolina, Tampa Bay. These are people teams that are winning cups. So you can say you don't like Anna or don't care about analytics all you want. The best teams out there right now, and watch out for the Montreal Canadiens as well, are heavy analytics teams. However, they're not, and they're not going to. So um, they would, the you know, they would stumble upon a great analytics player in Tarasenko here on the right hand side, and probably trade a guy like Noah Hannafin who is way underrated. And I've talked to Calgary fans and they all say he's overrated, but he's not. He's way underrated. I'm gonna piss a bunch of people off. He's probably, I think he's probably gonna head out to also try to get themselves a center because they do have a lot of depth at, on D. It's where their strength is. So they could afford to trade one, but, and maybe they have to if they can't find a center. So it's going to be a way big different team next year. And if you can convince Tarasenko that you're going to just 
We're going to get centers. We're going to change this up. You get to play with Huberto, who's a magnificent passer. You know, there could be a lot of value for Tarasenko to come to Calgary here. And, I mean, you're not getting younger anyways. Yeah, they, they've shown no problems giving long contracts to guys like Huberto, who are already 30 years old. Guys like Kadri are already that. So eventually you're going to be an old team. But since you've already done that, why not go all the way? If they have any chance at all, I think they got to do something like this, especially if Lindholm and Backlund are going to be gone. It's going to be crazy interesting in Calgary to see all the changes and what they turn out to be like. Don't even have a coach yet either, which might make it difficult to sign free agents because most players want to know the coach before they sign. Calgary Flames fans, what do you think about that? I have a feeling I'm going to get a mixed bag. You're going to get a whole bunch of people telling me I'm crazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm used to it. It's okay. Say whatever you want to say. I don't get offended. Never, ever, ever do I ever get offended. So, and I love talking to you. However, if you're going to come out and tell me I'm a dumbass, I will challenge you and go back and forth and have a discussion. So if you don't want to have a discussion about it, if you just want to come on and say, oh, you're a dumbass, I'll do that. It's fine. I don't care. But I will challenge you. I will have a conversation with you. I'm not opposed to arguing, but I'd rather just have a nice discussion. But I will argue. <laughs> I will. I have no problems with it whatsoever. And I will admit when I'm wrong as well. Okay. Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Now, I know. A lot of people, I mean, people are thinking that this team is going to rebuild and all that stuff like that. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Uh, they have some cap space finally. Uh, Dubas is coming in here. Uh, I think he's going to try to do some pretty interesting things. I don't even know what he's going to do. You know why? Because you, I don't think you can use the Toronto model really that strongly to predict what Dubas is going to do because it seems quite clear that he gave th there was a lot of control issues there there was a lot of things that he wanted to do that could couldn't get done because they wouldn't uh they either wouldn't do it or apparently he he had a deal for Chicklin and he needed the okay for Shanahan and Shanahan didn't get back to him and he ended up going to Ottawa there's a good example this is a guy that likes to make bold moves um, and I think he'll try to do that in Pittsburgh. Goaltending is going to have to be something that they have to take care of. Believe it or not, they have 20 million in cap space. 20 million. When has Pittsburgh had 20 million in cap space? Now they've got to re I think they have to rework this defense. So some money is going to have to go towards that. Um, They've got restricted free agents like Drew O'Connor shouldn't cost you that much or Paling. They that shouldn't cost you as much either. Jake Gunsel is going to need a big contract next year. You'll have to keep that in mind. But I just can't get past the fact that Tarasenko playing with Malkin I think Malkin and them and Crosby have a lot of clout. And if they know Tarasenko's out there, I think both of them are going to be knocking on that door saying, get him in here. We're going to win a cup for you. I don't know if that could happen, honestly. I, I think it's unlikely. But if they were to, say, go out and get a guy like Connor Hellebuck, um, heard that Gibson in Anaheim, who has been floundering in a terrible organization for a long time, and when he's hot, he's freaking amazing. And I think he just got burnt out in Anaheim. If he were to come here and play as good as Gibson can play, you never know. You sign Tarasenko to play with Malkin, put Raquel on the left side. He's played on the left side all right before. Uh, talk of Granlin moving on, but may, if not, he plays down on on uh, in the third line, which is more a better role for him. But then you've got Gunson, Crosby, Rust, Rust Malkin, Raquel, and Tarasenko, that's a solid top six. Certainly a playoff top six, especially if they get a goaltender. And you, and you keep rolling. You just never know. Look what, I mean, did anybody see Florida making it to the finals this year? 
really, right? Vegas wasn't thought of because of their goaltending to make it to the finals either. I mean, this team is not what you would call a top, top contender, but you've got two teams that weren't really top, top contenders in the finals this year. So what do you think about that, Pittsburgh fans? you got lots of space. You still can get a goaltender. Uh, cap's going to go up. Probably $5 million next year, I'm hearing. So you should be able to sign Gunsel back. You're a really old team, but that's not going to change anytime soon. You got I, Pittsburgh has two choices. Either keep on banging this drum or trade everybody. There is no use just trading a couple players. you got to trade pretty much everybody and take it all down. I just don't see them doing that. I don't see them doing that in Pittsburgh at all. Comment in the comment section, Pittsburgh fans. Subscribe to my channel if you're on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, search Perlow's NHL. You can try to hit that subscribe button while you're watching this video, and it won't let you. Just search Perlo, P-E-A-R-L-O, NHL, and you will find me. Subscribe, comment in the comment section. I'm going to be doing crazy videos like this over the summer. So lots of these videos coming your way. Next, the Washington Capitals. <clears throat> Washington actually has a little bit of cap space, about $7 million. They don't have that many people to sign. Uh, Fahervi is going to be a tough one. That'll be the one that would make it difficult. But it isn't really, uh, it wouldn't be unheard of for them to uh, staple a pick to Anthony Mantha and send him to Arizona or something like that for this year. I, I, and I wouldn't doubt if something like that were to happen. Mantha hasn't really worked out in Washington. He didn't work out in Detroit either. But uh, he's, had, he, he's constantly having injury problems. And this team is just win now. I mean, this team is not rebuilding. They got a little younger with uh, Rasmus Sandin. And, you know, they did a really good job of picking up Sonny Milano and Dylan Strom, who are on the younger side of things. But... You know, they love, it's a Russian community here in, in uh, Washington. And uh, I would sure that if you were to ask Ovechkin, hey, would you like to work with, with Tarasenko? He'd be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I definitely, definitely would. They have to sign Tom Wilson next year. Cap should be going up. I heard something like $5 million. So that shouldn't even be that much of a problem here. And try to fill out the rest of the roster the, all, the best they can. Do I think that they're a contender if they get Tarasenko? Probably not. But they're more of a contender for sure. Be pretty cool. There's also talk of Kuznetsov moving on. But I don't know. How are you going to get another center back for him? They, I, I don't know how they're, what they're going to be able to do with their center situation. If they move on from Evgeny Tarasenko or Kuznetsov. But. Probably, I think he just was emotionally drained at the end of the year, and because uh, it sounded like he was like wanting to move on. Maybe because he thinks there's a rebuild coming or something, but I don't think there is. He's probably pissed off that Orloff got moved. However, I think they probably keep him on. And then you've got Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Tarasenko as your top line. Wilson moves back with Strom. Uh, you'll have to put Sonny Milano there. And it's not fantastic, but it's a lot better. It's a lot better than it was. It'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. Maybe he takes less to play with Ovi, too. Maybe you can get him at six. And still find some room to fill out the roster in other ways. Uh, tough to say that this would be a cup contender. But if you're going to keep on banging the drum, I think these are the moves that you'd have to make. What do you think, Washington fans? And some very knowledgeable Washington fans. I talk to them quite regularly. And most of them are like, okay, let's stop banging this drum already. I just don't see it happening. I agree with you, but I don't see it happening. And it doesn't. And they'll say the same thing. It's not happening. All right, finally, and this may seem... A little bit crazy to some of you out there. The Detroit Red Wings. This is my top team. <coughs> and the reason why is Detroit has prospects coming up like 
crazy. Marco Casper, Cross Hennes, Carter Mazur. They've got tons of prospects coming up. And I just think it's, they, they're not four years away anymore. And sooner or later, I think they're going to have to add a veteran to help out Dylan, Dylan Larkin. Now, they kind of did that with Perron. Perron has, what, until 2024. He's 35 years old. The thing is, Perron and Tarasenko are friends. They played together. Tarasenko's a little younger, and this team can't score to save their freaking lives, man. It's... I think they could really use a veteran, and, and Perron is one, but another veteran to help these young players like Lucas Raymond and... Uh, Zadina, if he can ever find it, I don't know. Jonathan Berggren, all of these guys, he can help them with their shot, with the attitude you have to be able to score, with confidence, with all that kind of stuff like that. And I think it's really important that they do. Um, they had, they definitely have the cap space to pull it off at six million dollars a year, and I think you're going to see a lot of step up. From guys like Moritz Sider, Jake Wallman stepped up last year. Um, Dominic Kubalik, I don't know if he's going to be around forever anyway. So then, you know, you got to fill out that spot as well. But Raymond, Bergeron, uh, the young Marco Casper. But those, I think you're going to see a, a step up from those guys. And I think you'll see even a bigger step up if you have somebody like Tarasenko to help them along. And if they do step up, this team wasn't far away last year, honestly. I don't believe so. And they're a little closer. I think it's time, man. It's It's been a long rebuild here. I think it's time to start adding a vet or two. Get some shooters in there that can help their young players to be shooters. And Tarasenko has a way to do that. He's He helped guys like Kairou in St. Louis. I heard lots of great stuff about how Kyrou himself said that Tarasenko helped him an awful lot in the mentality and confidence to be an offensive player 82 games in this league. And I think Detroit needs that a lot. They get a little bit from Perron, no doubt about it. I think they get a lot more from Tarasenko in here. What do you think, Detroit fans? Vladdy Tarasenko, yes, I know. It's not going to be an easy... I, I think a lot of people are going to say, well, why didn't we just sign Bertuzzi then? I think there was some issues with Bertuzzi and Eisenman. I really do. I have I have that feeling, and I think also he, I maybe I could be wrong, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I even th I think Stevie Eisenman believes that he's gonna. He, he it would be do well to get a veteran that has done it in this league to help these young guys. Comment in the comment section, Detroit Red Wings fans. Let me know what you think about that. All right, my next one, I'm probably going to be doing a trade video. And I'm thinking maybe Gibson. Tell me in the comment section who you'd like to see. Lindholm in Calgary. There's talk of him being traded. It's going to be a crazy summer. A lot of trades happening, and I'm going to be talking about it all the time. So sub yourself up because it's going to be a wonderful ride. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening, everybody. Okay, bye.